But in today's social media world, we homemakers are constantly bombarded with other people's ideas, lifestyles, and even emotions. It's really easy to get lost in the middle of it all, especially when you're trying to juggle um, everything you have heard with the demands of being a homemaker. Mental health has become a huge topic lately with tons of people sharing their views on it. However, while I don't totally agree with every view and perspective out there, I have decided to share my view on what seems like a loud and growing conversation about mental health. Now in this episode, I'm going to share my honest opinion on mental health. I know that some of the things I will say later on in this video or in this episode might challenge your already existing beliefs, but I really hope you stick with me and hear me out. Hello, my name is Aneta Elisha Oladejo. Um, well Welcome or welcome back to another episode on this beautiful platform. I am the homemaker's personal growth coach and the blogger at anetailaisha.com. I'm the homemaker according to Tenant of Scriptures in Titus chapter 2, 3 to 5. So now let's get into it. Um, mental health has become almost an idol in our society. Uh, yes, you heard me right. It's almost as if we put, on, we put mental health on a pedestal, treating it as an ultimate solution to all our problems. Mental health has become a central theme in conversations about well-being, success, and personal fulfillment. We see it everywhere from social media posts to self-help books to even mainstream news. Now, the conversation is growing louder, but it does come with some sort of idolization. I have heard things like, if only I could fix my mental health, everything would be perfect. Or, mental health is a key to a successful life. To me, this kind of idea suggests that mental health has become more than just a state of well-being it's become a form of idol to worship we look to it as if it's the be all and end all of all happiness and success today mental health has been over glamorized in my opinion it is just the state of our emotional psychological and social well-being it's just how we handle life's ups and downs our emotions affect of course how we think feel and act every single day. It influences how we deal with stress, relate to others and make choices. At the same time, emotions are not something that can be perfectly balanced all the time. It's a journey and yes, we might need to do some patching along the way. Now for homemakers, of course, um, there are a lot of emotions that come with juggling many roles at once. You're managing the home, raising the kids, supporting your spouse, and possibly balancing other responsibilities like personal projects. That's a lot for one person. It can lead to the feeling of exhaustion, loneliness, and even burnout. In today's age, there's a pressure to appear mentally healthy in public. We have snippets, I mean, we share snippets of our lives showing only the highlights and victories and in the process we create an idealized version of ourselves now when we really do not measure up to this public persona that we are trying to put on ourselves you know the weight becomes heavy because we try to meet up the expectations that are set by others and of course more troubling the expectations we set by ourselves i want to make something very clear I'm not trying to downplay or make light of any emotions as humans. It's of course a, this is a valid discussion and definitely worth talking about. But what I'm saying is that these emotions should not become something we lean on a lot and sometimes maybe too much. The truth is sometimes this intense focus on mental health can end up doing more harm than good. Instead of helping, it makes things more complicated or makes things even worse in the long run. For instance, many people feel the need to focus on their emotions even and now more than ever and when i say focus i mean they want to deal with it in the public speak about it in videos and in return get pity and sympathy from people now i guess they feel more fulfilled doing this and and there are of course people drawn to these kinds of videos they respond and make comments about you know emotions that you could have dealt with on your own now imagine someone bumping into these kind of videos repeatedly it starts to create and different ideas in their heads on how to actually manage their emotions. They believe that by expressing their emotions online with millions of people that they do not even know is one of the only ways to feel better. Now, of course, this becomes a very vicious cycle building the realm of ideas. And that's the reason why, you know, the ideas of mental health keeps changing over and over and over again. As much as I know that many people do not know how to process, you know, their emotions, feelings and struggles, which 
which uh, this episode is going to be helping out. I am of the opinion that treating mental health as an idol can be harmful. It can create a false narrative where mental health issues are now seen as either personal failures or as a badge of honor instead of something to be managed and understood. We might end up feeling pressured to constantly showcase our mental health progress or on the contrary to hide our struggles to avoid judgment. Now you're probably wondering why do people idolize mental health? Let's take a moment to look at that. We live in a culture obsessed with finding the perfect formula for happiness. This quest, this quest often includes a focus on our emotions but without a true understanding of its complexities. The market is flooded with quick fix solutions from trendy wellness apps to self-proclaimed gurus, all promising to deliver instant mental clarity and emotional stability. It is easy to get swept up in this, hoping that the next self-help book or meditation app will finally bring that vague sense of well-being. However, I believe that what we're missing here is balance. Our emotions are incredibly important, but it's not a magic pill. It's not something that you can simply achieve and then forget about. It's a journey, a, pro a process, and something that requires ongoing attention and understanding. Idolizing our emotions doesn't solve our problems. It often complicates them by setting unrealistic standards and expectations. I want to talk about how we can address these issues. Number one way is self-awareness. Basically, the foundation of mental health is self-awareness. So um, I want you to think about this scenario, right? You're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook and you see someone's perfect home, their well-dressed kids, and maybe just their life that seems all put together. And suddenly you think, why can't I be more like her? Or I wish I was more like her. I'm sure that sounds really familiar. It's easy to get caught up in the comparison trap. We've all been there, right? But here's the truth. You're not supposed to be her. And she's not you, of course. And she's not supposed to be you either. Each of us is unique with our own strengths, weaknesses, and stories. And that's where self-awareness starts from. As homemakers or as moms or as women today, it is okay to be inspired for by others. But there is a fine line between being inspired and trying to actively become that person. Have you ever found someone or yourself unconsciously mimicking someone else's style, tone, or way of doing things? It happens. It's like you're slowly losing a bit of who you are, but before you know it, you're more focused on being like someone else rather than embracing who you really are. The key to avoiding this is, of course, be aware. Be self-aware. Start by understanding who you are, especially what your strengths are, and accepting that your journey is different from anyone else's. You can, of course, have your own path, your own challenges, and your own victories, and that is how life should actually be. That's when it's perfectly okay. Psalms 139 verse 14 reminds us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are His works, and our souls know it right, right? Now, this verse is so powerful because it shows us that God, of course, did not make us all for the same reason. We are uniquely designed with a purpose. Each of us are uniquely designed with a purpose and trying to fit into someone else's mold that we were crafted to feel, it gets us to a point where we start to lose ourselves because we are trying to measure ourselves to someone else's, someone else online or the expectations that people have of us. And the beauty of understanding that you have a role, with a, you know, a role that is specific to you will help you accept who you are and have peace from chasing someone else's life. So the next time you catch yourself in the middle of comparing, take a step back and remind yourself, I am wonderfully made with my own gifts and my own calling. That is where your strength lies in embracing who you, who God has made you to be, not who the world says that you should be. Number two would be embracing your emotions. Now I know very well that emotions can be very strong. Sometimes it feels like they take over everything, but really emotions are real. They are a part of our lives, but they shouldn't be in charge of the decisions that we make, especially big ones. Now, as moms, homemakers, um, women, you know, we, we each have probably experienced a time where we made choices because we were sad or frustrated only to look back um, much later in retrospect and think to ourselves, um, I shouldn't have done that. It happens to all of us. If you're in the middle of a mess, emotions are high and suddenly everything feels like a crisis, our 
have fun we feel that the world is coming to an end but in actuality it's actually a part of growing and learning and those intense feelings are a part of the growth process there was a time when i felt so overwhelmed with everything you know managing home creating content keeping up my responsibilities and of course the comparison trap hit me hard i started thinking maybe i wasn't supposed to be doing all of this right i felt stuck at that point but the truth is this um i tried to talk to people who i felt were already doing better you know at that point in their lives but they just could not understand where i was and i'm sure this sounds familiar and i bet that we've all been there at one point or the other at that point i began to really understand that at the end of the day no one can embrace my emotions but me and i have to allow myself walk through those emotions right instead of letting them take over me so what i did was i took a pause i prayed i processed them and i realized something important i was looking outward comparing myself to others when i should have been looking to go and trusting him with the journey that he has put me on and the bible says looking onto jesus the author and the finisher of your faith is so that we can avoid times like that and the next time you're feeling overwhelmed like everything is falling apart take a pause take a breath let yourself you know process what you're feeling if you are feeling sad about where you are or you're feeling disappointed with yourself or frustrated allow yourself to go through those emotions and walk through them but do not let them make you make decisions that you would come back to regret the bible says be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god now what does this mean it means that when those emotions start to rise all right take them to god first pray and then let him know what is on your heart do not give room to anxiety you know don't be anxious for nothing god is there pray to him he's ready to listen and guide you and another thing to remember is this emotions are not the enemy they are a part of who we are but they should not define us feelings of course come and go they change but your value and your purpose in god do not change so when the storms of emotions start to rise don't let them control your life don't let them make you big life altering decisions instead embrace them process them and of course break through them number three way is understand your traumas and your triggers i'm sure we've all had things from our past that somehow affect how we feel and act today it might be of course a tough experience that you really want to forget or a painful event or series of incidents that you wish never happened because of the mark they left on us but here's something comforting you see those triggers of things that bring up those old memories of pain can actually be a way of god protecting us think of it like this the trigger are like the warning lights on your car dashboard they are signals that remind you of something important just as these lights uh just as those lights alert on your car um you know tells you to maybe check the engine or something else that might be wrong with your car your triggers remind you of your past pain so that you can avoid making similar mistakes or facing further harm think of it as god's way of saying remember you've been through this before let's not go down that road again these reminders can help us stay safe and guide us away from repeating pain full experiences it's not about punishing us or dragging us down it's about keeping us on the right path psalms 34 verse 18 gives us a beautiful reassurance it says the lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save it such as our a contract spirit this means that god is especially close to those of us who are hurting or struggling he sees our pain and is right there with us helping us heal and helping us find our way through it in today's world it's easy to reach out for appeal when we are feeling overwhelmed or we are sad or we are anxious many people turn to medication to manage their feelings hoping that it will make things better but from what i have understood so far these drugs often end up complicating things rather than solving the core issues i'm not a doctor so i'm not here to give any medical advice or anything like that however i have noticed that some people rely on medication before turning to a deeper source of help what if i told you that there of course is another way to find peace without jumping straight to peace now let me tell you what i believe in which of is the power of god at every tough time in my life i turn to god's word for comfort and guidance the situation might not be easy but i have found out that leaning on scriptures is incredibly powerful in calming my mind romans chapter 12 verse 2 says it says and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed 
transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good acceptable and the perfect will of god this verse reminds me all the time that instead of looking for quick fixes i can find true renewal and peace through god's word now here's the thing with medication while it might seem to help in the short in the short term it can actually make things worse over time now when you rely on drugs your brain starts to get used to the chemicals this can of course change how you think and feel sometimes in ways that you do not even expect the constant use of medication can rewire your brain making you experience new traits of, of behaviors that were not there before our bodies were not meant or were not made to live on drugs long term over time this constant reliance can lead to even more issues and changes that would make your life more complicated the goal should be to address the roots of the problem and not just mask the symptoms which is what drugs do so here is my encouragement to you today when you are struggling do not rush to label it as a mental health crisis that needs medication instead take time to process that emotion if you're feeling sad ask yourself why you're feeling sad seek comfort go into god's word and find scriptures that would give peace or give you joy in the times of sadness and then trust you know in the word of god to bring you the peace that you need the next time you feel overwhelmed, remember the Bible. Remember that it offers a powerful way to renew your mind and help you find true calm. Now, before you go, I have a question for you. Are you feeling the pressure to conform to an ideal image of mental health? And more importantly, how can we shift our focus from idolizing our emotions to genuinely understanding and caring for them in a balanced and healthy way. Please kindly send in your response in the comment section so that we can grow together. I believe that these topics are so important and talking about them would actually help us grow and do better. So thank you very much for watching this episode. If you stay to this point, I am so excited. Thank you so much. And of course, I'll be waiting to hear from you in the comment sections. Don't forget to like the video, share it if you care to and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so i'll be seeing you on the next one and if you're listening via the podcast or anywhere else on our streaming platforms don't forget to follow like and drop a comment as well you can also follow me on all streaming platforms tiktok x and instagram i remember to keep growing as you keep your home and do not forget to ascribe all the glory to god both for all of the testimonies both little and big until the next video godspeed success as we know it is the compounded effect of the everyday steps we take towards a main goal one of the things that gives peace and mental clarity while homemaking is putting the emptiness season clearly before our eyes taking baby steps at the moment while still on the journey of making and keeping the home towards that season is an important aspect of self-care most people overlook it strengthens the intentionality that goes into making every moment you have right now count. My blog AnettaElishaOladeja.com helps young women navigate their homemaking season in view of the empty nest phase. From ebooks to short courses on time management for homemakers to parenting, finances, and building small businesses while at home, there is plenty to keep you learning and growing while you create the warm, loving space that your family needs to thrive. I am also an, a local SEO specialist dedicated to helping small businesses like yours stand out in your community. Whether you're a budding entrepreneur or a seasoned business owner, you can employ my services to amplify your online presence. With seven years of experience in search engine optimization, I know the ins and the outs of getting your business noticed online. You can book a free consultation or free Google business profile page audit on AnettaElishaOladeja.com to get started today.